The stimulus checks are here, so I'm relaunching Woman Ease Volume 4, which has over 250 hours of bonus content. I'm also relaunching Woman Ease Audio, which is less than half the price of the video version. Link in description. Okay, let's get to it, guys. My special guest today is an expert in men's fashion, and I feel very fortunate to have him on the show today. He has been featured in publications such as 405 Magazine, Splurge Magazine, OKC, and the Oklahoma Gazette. He has been on the television show, Living Oklahoma, and he's one of the most sought-after men's fashion consultants in the country. Country. I'd like to introduce Kevin Samuels to TSR Live. And Kevin, thanks for coming on today, man. It's a real pleasure. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me, man. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Hey, guys, what's going on? Good stuff. Now, if you guys have questions for Kevin, uh, just make sure that you put them in the chat and we'll get to them. We'll get to your questions in the order uh, that they were received. And Kevin, I guess the first question I'll ask you is what got you into men's fashion? When did you know that you had a knack for making men look good? You know, I Everybody can say they were born to do something. I, I've always been interested in this since I was about seven years old. But um, all my buddies, uh, I used to always dress well because I just liked it. But I knew when I could actually work with other friends. Okay. I would take my guys who were computer engineers or, or video game geeks and show them how if you can just put something on it, fits your body, uh, you can up your skills two or three points and then go from being the nerd in, in the high school to actually being walking the front halls and being just like everybody else. Uh, and luckily for me, my, my outside, my career in outside sales always made me be on, on stage. I had sure. to form and present, uh, but I fell backwards into this when I left corporate America, starting a boutique ad agency and I was doing PR for an attorney. She was going to go meet with the governor, had to kill her PR project. But she dressed, she said herself, I dress like an Oompa Loompa. I'm a <laughs> and she's like, I don't know what to wear. And she's like, Hey, you always dress really sharp. Can you help me? And I'm like, Well, yeah, you could do this, this. She's like, Well, how much do I need to pay you for that? Ding 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 ding. Uh oh, ding, there ding. it was. There it was. There it was. So I, I looked up, I started looking at it, and people had told me that before, but before the internet, it really wasn't practical. Um sure. So, you know, fast forward, I went and got my certifications and all that kind of stuff. But really, it's just a passion. When I'm not on the on the phone or on, on the Internet or making videos, man, I'm smelling fragrances, looking at different stuff. This is just what I do. I live this stuff. So long good. story short, that's how I got there. Good. Very good. Yeah, it sounds like uh, it sounds to me like you had a passion uh, for men's fashion before before you started getting paid for it, before you started before you started yeah. doing this for yeah. a living. How long have you officially been uh, a men's fashion consultant? How long have you been in the business? I've been in business since 2012. Uh, OK. And I just got my actual, you know, there's some people who are in the business who aren't certified, but um, I believe in going to get your credentials. Right. So uh, there's an association of image consultants international where you have to go through a battery of different tests. You have to meet all these different marks. So I just actually got my uh, my master level certification. So that means actually, let's say Tom Ford, if they decided to call and say, hey, would you like to consult with us? I actually am qualified to go do that kind of stuff. But I don't like to work at that level. I like to okay. work at the everyday regular people level who like to shop at target walmart there you go now you're talking my language yeah gap you know i'm not trying to break people's banks i'm trying to give guys the biggest bang for your buck and let you use clothing as a tool to get what you want out of life good very good um let me ask you this just to because obviously, you know, my audience, myself included, we're not swimming in money. I mean, most of us, I would imagine we probably do all right. What do you, why do you think it's important to look good on a budget? Why do you think it, listen, if you've got Versace money, like if you can afford, listen, if you can go out and buy a $3,000 Italian suit and still be in the black and you know, your portfolio is, is rock solid. You're more, everything, everything is good. That's all well and good. But why do you think it's important for men who don't make a shitload of money to look good? on a budget the, the science of it is is pretty settled everybody knows you don't get a second chance to make a first impression we all know right that. of course but here's the real hardcore reality inside of seven seconds of somebody seeing you and meeting you for the first time they make 11 different assumptions about you that stick you can't change them without hurling effort so it's important for a guy to which which is image is not just your appearance it's your appearance sure. behavior your communication and your digital footprint. So it's A, B, C, D. 
If you get nothing else from here, take that away. To use that as a tool to get what you want. We've talked about, even if you talk about dating broads, you can either be in the yes or no pile with your image, far away. Uh, Ron Wills has really been talking about this a lot recently uh, as he's talking to guys about you know getting in with women. Right. We all know it. The problem is a lot of us, the, the, a lot of us had our moms buying our clothes or our girlfriends buying our clothes. Yep. Women dress guys to look cute. And guys dress for status. So most of us, you see most, you go to the local mall and you see a guy who's in his 30s and there's not he's not really dressed differently than a guy, than a boy who's eight or nine years old. That's wow. only happened in the last 30 years with the advent of athwear, athleisure, Jordans and all this other kind of stuff. So it's important because you're an entrepreneur. You're a sure. business owner. You talk about game. A big part of game is attraction. Yes. Yes, it is. And, you know, that line that you have on your head says something. That says that guy's attention to detail. I don't care if you some baggy sweatpants. A woman's going to look at your face and look at the line of your hair, how you're being trimmed, and they're going to say he's neat. He grooms himself. That must mean he's clean. Oh, I can have sex with him. That happens before she can even get into her conscious brain. Right, right. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's it. And and guys can do this on a budget. Hear me, guys. You don't have to be rich. You can shop at TJ Marshall, TJ Raw, Ross Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Nordstrom Rack. If you just remember three things, your clothes have to fit. Okay. Keep your shoes clean, and just make sure your lines are tight on your face. And you're in. And if you wear a fragrance every day, a, a cologne every day, even better. Okay. You got that stuff at home. Right, right. Yeah. So so it, it sounds to me like you're telling us that cha- that that we more than likely have everything we need already to look good. Dude, here's the funny thing. People don't wear the average person doesn't wear 80% of their clothes. And when I say that wow. 70 to 80% of their clothes, people are like, nah, that's not true. So when I go and show them, I say, okay, go into your closet and I ask you one question. Have you worn this in the last 12 months? It's a yes or no question. It's a binary choice. If it's yes, it goes over here. If it's no, it goes over here. Right. I give you a glass of, I give you a Xanax and some bourbon. And I'm like, okay. And I'll show you that you only wear this stuff. And I say, you know, Donovan, if you're going to go meet, you know, uh, some mucky muck or some celebrity, you're going to do this, such so show me the shirt you'd grab for. Okay, and you show me. And I said, every shirt in front of that shirt was a waste of time. And then I show guys that, wow, I only wear about, excuse me, only wear about 20% of my clothing. Okay, so we just take that clothing and we just reconfigure it and make a ton, a, a tremendous amount of outfits out of the stuff that you already like. Okay. You wear. And then you go from there. It's already there, man. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 um, I, the funny thing is, is that a lot of guys, like we think we know how to dress ourselves because as you said earlier, we grow up being dressed by our mothers and our girlfriends. Right. Um, and listen, man, my girl, she buys me clothes. You know right. I mean? This is, this is, this is just how we do it. So I think it's very important. Um, I think me personally, I think it's very important for it. And listen, it's okay if your girl, uh, you know, buys you clothes or whatever, oh, yeah. but I think it's very important for you to dress yourself and know what looks good on you and what does not. Very much, very much so. And, you know, and that is that's around the world because 70 percent of all men's clothing are bought by women. But it's the guys who actually say that again. You said say that. Say that. Give me that statistic one more time, because that's important. All men's clothing is purchased by women. Mm. You know, think about it from and we've been dressing ourselves since we were two. So it's really, really hard to tell men who are rational, logical and practical you don't know how to do this right, and you've been doing it all your life. There's a difference between being having clothing on and then dressing for outcomes. I help guys dress for outcomes, results. You're, you're a man. I'm a man. Sure. Can we go cut a tree down using an axe? Sure. Can we cut the same tree down using a handsaw? Sure. But why not use the chainsaw? Use the right tool for the job. Right. We understand that. Clothing has to be used as a tool for the job in your personal life. I'm going to say this right now. I have gotten more business in my professional life just being dressed the way I dress than I do when I'm actually soliciting customers. How so about that? So, so it's almost like you're wearing your, it's like you're your own business card. Almost. That's it. You're your own business card. You're your, 
You're your own car. You're your own advertisement. You are your own brand. Okay. Everybody has what I call a personal brand. And it's not what you think. It's what people say about you when you leave the room. The talk. You know, you may not dig my style, but at least you'd be like, that guy is stylish. Right. Right. You pick right. Your career. You have to pick that outcome, so you have to dress those ways. Let me ask you something because I think this is I think it's important for men to to know and understand why do clients come to you in the first place? Why what is their what's their and I know that you alluded to this a little bit earlier, but what's the number one reason that 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 your male clients come to you? What's what seems to be the issue? When they come to you and they say, Kevin, I need you to I need you to give me a consultation on the way I dress because of and what's what what's the number one reason there? Most guys are in some sort of transition. Transition means you've either lost weight or you gain weight. You've got, had a breakup. Okay. You're getting divorced. Um, you're looking to move up in your company or you're going to start your business. Guys are really, guys are looking for answers. Um, and that's my best client. When somebody is saying, you know what? I know image is important, but I don't know how to do it. And I've done it my way before. Now I want different outcomes. I need a pro to help me get there. The biggest one, and honestly, the biggest subset of that tends to be some sort of breakup with a woman. Right, right. Yeah, yeah like when, when they're getting, like they're, they're back on the dating market or they're just mm -hmm. recently divorced and they want to become more attractive. Okay, all right. Like, you think about it, that, that same woman who was buying your clothes is gone too. Ah, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You've lost your yeah. own personal fashion consultant, right? Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, man. My next question is my next question is for guys who okay so let's let, let's just take the step by step here. So I'm Don, I'm Donovan Sharp. I've you know I've just gone through a breakup divorce whatever not that I'll ever get married again and you know my viewers and listeners know all about that. But I Donovan Sharp I walk into Kevin Samuel's office and I say Kevin I'm on a budget I make $45,000 a year. I'm, I'm a supervisor at a power plant, but I want to look good. I want to look good for the ladies. I'm about to be back on the dating market. What is the first step that I should take when I decide to overhaul my current wardrobe? Where should I start? Everything starts with the shoes. Okay. Okay. Just like the fountain. You're building a house, Donovan. Mm -hmm. We could build the biggest palatial mansion. We could put, you know, artwork in there, the greatest furniture and all this other stuff. If the foundation sucks, the house sure. will fall apart and it won't work. Shoes are so critical for every outfit. I've seen guys in $10,000 tailored suits wearing hush puppies and it throws the whole thing off. Oh my God. <laughs> Here's the thing. Shoes are have a, a storied history I won't tell about here, but they communicate status mm -hmm. and so many different things. I mean, think about it. When you could, I could borrow, if we, if you and I were, if I came to wherever you live and we're going to go out on a town and I didn't have any clothes, I could borrow your clothes, I could borrow your cologne i could borrow your car i could borrow a lot of things i can't borrow your drawers i can't borrow your <laughs> those are two things you can't borrow so they're uniquely right. a guy. so men and women look at a man from afar size them up and then they go down to the shoes are they clean guys even if you don't have any money shine your shoes if you have lace-up shoes let's say you have a pair of brown lace-ups put some blue shoelaces in them Okay. That little pop of color, that little detail doesn't cost you. Um, keep them clean. Put a shoe tree in them. Okay. A guy only needs five pairs of shoes. Okay. That was my. That was going to be my very next question. You read my mind. Five pairs of shoes. Let's go down That's that it. list. A guy needs five pairs of shoes. And, and understand, any kind of athletic shoe is a lifestyle choice. I'm a cyclist, so I need cycle shoes. I don't need Jordans. A guy needs a pair. A guy needs a straight black lace up kind of oxford that's what you're going to wear with a, a suit to a business interview a funeral something like okay. that the next shoe you're going to need is some sort of loafer like a penny loafer or something that you can slide on this is the shoe a guy wear a lot the sexy shoe will be a either a single monk or a double monk strap shoe that okay. shoe can be worn from casual to even suiting it is one of the sexiest shoes one of the best looking shoes a guy can wear the next shoe is some sort of a boot uh, whether it's a work boot, a chuck a boot, an uh, ankle boot, or a Chelsea boot, especially, and that adds a lot of style and flair. And then uh, you need a driver. It's, okay. Uh, that's a, a loafer with just like, you know, uh, studs at the bottom. Some people go for a boat shoe over that. That's the only five shoes you need. Everything after that is a lifestyle choice. 
And then you get okay. those five shoes, you, you got the foundation of a great wardrobe that will last. And the question of price and quality always comes up too. So I'm sure that'll come later on now. <laughs> oh, listen, um, and, and, and that, I mean, obviously price and quality makes a big difference. So on that note, so you need, so five pairs of shoes, where, where would you suggest that men should go to, to, to get these five pairs? Of shoes? Should you buy them online? Should you actually go into the store to try them on to make sure it's a good fit? I mean, cause I, listen, I mean, I'm a target guy. I'm a yep. TJ Maxx guy. I mean, I don't mind. And listen, I'm a Goodwill guy too. Like a lot of the clothes that I have in my closet right now came from, you know, you came from incredible stores. stuff from Goodwill. Absolute man, man, man. I've been telling my friends for years, bro. You guys got to get on that Goodwill thrift store game. So where would you, where would you suggest that men start to shop first in order to build at least a foundation right now with their shoe collection? Let, let me give you. Understand, shoes are so important. I we could talk for hours on this, but let me give you two takeaways. Okay. okay. One, it is manufacturally professionally impossible to make a quality pair of men's dress shoes or any of those shoes I just talked about for under 150 bucks. You just can't get the leather. You can't get everything you need. You can find them for less. You can find them for 60 or $70, but you'll end up replacing that pair of shoes, that 60 or $70 pair of shoes. You'll replace it every six months to two years. My shoes are into 10 years plus. Okay. Wow. How, wait, hold on 10 years plus. How the hell do you do that? Um, it's because everything I just said, you take care of them. You take care of your shoes and they take care of you. This shoe right here. Yeah. How old would you think that shoe is? I don't know. A year, maybe two years old. Dude, this shoe is almost nine years old. <laughs> oh, it's wow. because I do everything I said. I put, I, I, I put it, you got to take care of your shoes. Like you take care of a car, put a shoe sure. tree in it. The average foot sweats and a uh, half a pint of sweat a day that gets deposited right into your shoe. <laughs> I, listen, I guarantee, listen, man, I guarantee you that 95% of people listening right now did not know that, including myself. I yeah. did not know that. And you think about it, it just sits and you, you kick your shoe off and it just sits there and day over day over day, you don't clean it. Imagine if you just didn't brush your teeth, what your mouth would look like. That's how we treat our <laughs> oh, shoes. Jesus Christ. It's the most important part of the outfit. So here's the thing. The best value for shoe dollar, in my opinion, on the market is a company called Magnani, M A G. N A N N I. I've recommended these to dozens or hundreds of guys. You can go into your, I recommend doing this, gank it. Go into your okay. local Neiman Marcus, go into your local Nordstrom, go get your foot size. Most guys don't have their foot size right. We just don't do these things. But once you get your foot size, McNani runs true to size. Okay. Nordstromrack.com. That shoe that I just showed you, yeah, sells for 650 bucks. I got it on sale at Nordstrom Rack for $82. And then I got it on NordstromRack.com doing a clear the rack sale, which is 25% off of clearance. I got it for 25% off of that. So I walked away with a $600 pair of shoes for about 65 bucks, tax included. Had it to me in two days. Dude, you listen, you are a man after my own heart. I met listen, on the listen, whether it's like I've bought any anything clothes underwear cars land uh, listen i'm not paying sticker man like right. i'm always i'm looking for a discount and i don't listen i'm i'm not the kind of guy who likes to spend a lot of money on clothes as mm -hmm. it is i mean i just admitted here on you know live on the internet that i shop at the thrift store and i've and i've i've admitted that before no, in articles no. but there's no no there there's no shame in my game man i'm not trying to go broke but it's no. but to get a $600 pair of shoes for under for what $82 65 bucks and they were delivered in two days because here's the thing i, I started with the plan Donovan, okay. the average 40 year old professional person as a man has over fifty thousand dollars tied up in his wardrobe the average not everybody sure that's from shoes that's from underwear to hats the average woman has seventy five thousand. dollars would anybody make a fifty thousand dollar purchase or seventy five thousand dollar purchase without doing research without a plan not. Right. But most of us go out and buy clothes because we'll be walking and we'll do something and we'll be walking by a store and they'll say, hey, big sale extravaganza. And you'll see a shirt. And it'd be four dollars. Like, oh, that's, cool. <laughs> that's me. That's me. That's me. I'm the guy. Oh, four dollars. Let me go get that. But, but you you are different. Most people will buy it and you go into the closet and it's still got the tag on it. Mm. And it's like going to your closet and be like, I have nothing to wear because nothing fits. You have no plan. There's no style personality. So. 
for 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 everybody, it's more important to know what not to buy. Okay. Like I said, my brand is stylish. I know what works for me and what I'm trying to communicate. You could have the most kick-ass Gucci, Ferragamo, Versace, uh, whatever high name brand lumberjack flannel shirt, and it could be for five bucks. I wouldn't get it because it doesn't fit with what I'm trying to communicate. Okay. So, so you have to have a plan. So when planning your wardrobe, you have to have a plan. You can't just say, "Oh, this looks oh, good," or "That's a great price." Let's just go buy, buy this and that and the other. Because then, when it times to go, when it when when it comes time to go out or go do something, you don't have it put together because there was no plan. Is that? I mean, is that about it. what you're saying? That's it. And see, instinctively, you know, like I said, that twenty percent, you instinctively know what looks good on you. Right. Take what you are. The thing about image is you're not peacocking. You're not wearing an outfit. I'm taking what's in here that you already know, and I'm bringing it out public to where your image and appearance doesn't matter, where people can just see Donovan. It's the same thing you do with that 20%. We take that 20% and we just tweak it. Oh, you made, you you got this right here? Let's add this pair of shoes. Let's clean this pair of shoes. Let's trash that pair of shoes. Let's change these shoelaces. Okay, then we need these pants. We need this shirt, such and so forth. Okay, here's the basics. You build a wardrobe, and then you maintain it. You put you you keep your clothes because now it's small, it's minimal, like guys love small, minimal, highly right. functional. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, I'm gonna put this my my shirts on wooden hangers because these are good shirts and they're gonna last me a long time. I'm gonna care for one better, and you don't have to worry about replacing them because they're gonna tear up. Even your t-shirts. And then if you decide you want to splurge on a trend or something, you can. But most often, guys are just like, here's the thing. With most guys, once we get our wardrobe where it is, it's just maintenance. We save money and spend it on toys. Right, right. That this is this is what we like to do. Listen, you said something in there that I had never heard before. You said I want to take care of my clothes, so I'm going to put them on wooden hangers. What's the difference between putting clothes on wooden hangers or plastic hangers? Like 99% of the population, because I'd never heard plastic that before. It's all about the shirt. Like a shirt. Uh, first off, it helps to keep the moth stuff down. Uh, it helps with the lines of the shirt. They're more sturdy. Um, you can get away with plastic hangers on some things, but on your dress shirts, on your pants, and on your, especially in your suit jackets. I mean, again, you don't have a lot of these things, so you get the appropriate thing for your right. Item. Yes, now, but listen, there, there's no listen. Spend a little extra coin on taking care of your shit, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you think about it. If you don't, if you only need one, a guy only needs one suit for his entire life. Right. That's right. a charcoal gray two button classically cut suit. That's it. Not black, not navy blue. Charcoal gray because it fits in both things. Well, if you only need one suit. And I can say, Donovan, don't go to local Nordstrom's or Macy's. Go to, I can show you where you can go get it tailor-made specifically to your body mm -hmm. for a third of the cost and have 10 times the quality. You put that suit on, it's going to feel like butter. It's going to look specifically for you. Think about it. When you first got, if you ever bought a new car off the lot, most guys have, when they bought that new car off the lot, you're washing it every day. Oh, yeah, of course. That's what you do with that suit because that suit takes care of you and you take care of it because when you wear it, when you need to, you know you're the man. And and if you already have confidence, it takes you to the stratosphere because people are like, wow, that suit looks incredible. Is there a money or whatever? And you're like, dude, no, this is custom made by Talia and it's 400 bucks, but it looks like 5,000. Right. Because those two companies go to the same place, get the material from the same place. I know all those things. So guys come to me, for a learning curve you can get a qual a guy can get a quality wardrobe for next to nothing and then take that money and put it in a mutual fund right 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 invest your money quit let's listen if you don't take care of your clothes if you don't take care of your possessions they become depreciating assets That's but it. It, but when you use things like wooden hangers or shoe trees you know, I mean, this this is what helps you to preserve these potentially yeah. depreciating assets. I had one guy call me. He's like, man, I, I, I never was big into fashion, but just as I've been watching you, I have just started doing two simple things. I, I wear this cologne called Nautica Voyage. It's 15 bucks, one of the best fragrances on the planet. You can pick it up at Ross or TJ Maxx. Nautica Voyage. 
He's like, ma'am, I've been getting compliments and I've never been complimented before in my life. I could hear it in his voice. Wow. How it changed his life. People normally just walk by you but say you smell good. That boosts your esteem and so hell yeah. Walk higher. Then he said, now and I've been ironing my clothes instead of just wearing them because it's a non-iron shirt. He's like, now my my managers are starting to call me into meetings that I normally wasn't in. They're asking my opinion and stuff. He's like, they're treating me completely different. And it's all because I he cho- he clothes. chose another scent and he ironed his shirts. That's unbelievable. How how those two small differences, those two small changes have made that big a difference. <laughs> Let me add, now this is a very good um uh, this is an interesting question. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of the early, and I know that I know that PUA and and game and all that is 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 certainly not something that at least you haven't publicly dabbled in. But there is, you mentioned something earlier called peacocking. Mm-hmm. Is peacocking ever appropriate as far as fashion goes, or should you really just keep it simple and just keep it keep it stylish? You know, it's appropriate in one-off situations. Okay. You're going on a you're going to a cruise, a singles cruise to go. the Bahamas, then yeah, go out and get a peacock outfit. But in general, you need to use at least a plus one. If if you don't know what it's going to be like, let's say you're going to a dinner party, you want to dress like everybody else, but one level higher because your appearance communicates so many different things, but you don't want to be wearing rhinestones and studs, such and so forth. <laughs> right. You, you want, you know, especially if you're, you know, it depends on what you're communicating. If you're, if you're going to do business, as as a black man going to do business, I use, I call, I always cons- consult my black clients and say, use your black armor. Clothing is armor for the world. What is the image of the typical? Everybody has a typical stereotype. We're, you know, go in and defy those stereotypes. And how many times does someone say, hey, you're black, but you're not black, black. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As but soon as they, well, it really, it, does, it doesn't really have, I mean, I I don't dress, like I'm not the stereo, I don't know if I'm the stereotypical black guy or not, but I have a lot of different, I've, I've got a couple of, of fashion. Yeah, matters. And then I've got a couple of unique accessories. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I understand what you mean. You want to, you want to defy um kind of go against those stereotypes and 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 when you do that people people notice you anyway because you sort of stick mm-hmm. out and it, here's the thing image is a subtitle the a b c d guys remember it's a b c d appearance behavior communication digital footprint appearance is just the first seven seconds it just opens the door you can nail it with your appearance and blow it as soon as you open your mouth but how you behave and how you talk the the subconscious mind is an incredible thing Donovan, I've had more doors open for me. I've gone higher, farther in corporate America, places I should not be able to go based on my resume. I, I've been in line with other people, but because the way I carry myself, I've been invited to places and gone places. Now, here's the thing. I could do the job. Sure, of course. But I got the opportunity. And that's what we don't like to hear is the world is a competitive place. You need every advantage you can have. And if all things being equal, I ask everybody, if you are hiring somebody, if you're going to date somebody and they were all equal on paper, credentials, such and so forth, are you going to go with the person that looks more the part or just the other guys? And they're like, I'll go the person that looks more the part. Right, Why? right. Because your money's on the line. Right, yeah. Ex- listen, I-, I don't know if you remember this. Um, uh, former tennis great Andre Agassi um, had a... Um, had a contract with Canon, the Canon, the, the Canon cameras, mm-hmm. and I remember the slogan was "Image is everything." And of mm-hmm. course, you know there are people out there who said, "Well, image isn't everything." And I remember thinking to myself, "Yeah, actually, it kind of is." Mm-hmm. Image, and see, the, here's the it's the chicken or the egg theory. This is the debate I tend to get. Yeah, you know, I'm good with my image. It's really about my game and my character, and that's more important. And I'm like, no, the science says no. If in that seven seconds, if you get put over here, you can get out of there, but you're going to have to spend 10 times as much time. A PUA would say, go to another target. Sure. Right. It's not an either or thing. It's an and thing. You don't win with just the pass. You don't win with just the run. You win with the balanced attack. There we go. And if you go in and say, I got offense and defense, I got run and pass. I have, I have my image and I have my game or my credentials or my whatever. 
you're a double threat. It's better than going in the hand into fight with both hands than one sure. tied behind your back. But a lot of guys, because we don't because we don't buy our clothes, because we've been conditioned into thinking, well, you don't want to be superficial and you don't want to be fake and you don't want to be this, you want to be that. A lot of guys have been talked into being the lesser version of themselves. And then you see the same types of guys winning. I mean, if you look at a CEO, there's a there's a look, there's a uniform look. Sure. Yes. Every yes. Six, you look at the top level of anything you want to get into, and there's a uniform and there's a code. If you want to get in there, you got to do that. Then you can change it. People always go to Mark Zuckerberg, the Steve Jobs, and say they don't do that kind of stuff. Yeah, but you didn't create a computer in your garage and you didn't <laughs> you didn't create the world's largest and most successful and most profitable website. Like those guys are the outliers, those are the exceptions to the rule. So what it really comes down to is, guys, it's really understanding that it's simple, it's easy, it's less expensive, and the outcomes are incredible. Um, because, like I said, by just wearing a $15 fragrance that smells great year round, the guy got compliments. He's never been complimented before on a fragrance in his life. By just simply pressing out his shirt, now he's being considered to be on level with people who normally just bypass them in the halls. What does that do for a man's self-esteem, the way he looks at himself? When people, I mean, th there's just no two ways about it. So it's just a matter of learning how to go do it. Is it ever appropriate to wear a suit other than to work or professional functions or funerals? When it, when else is it appropriate for a man to wear a suit? Because, because a man who is in public in a suit, listen, he's in his uniform. And a lot of, and a lot of the high-level PUA guys, mm -hmm. a lot of the high -level, I mean, you know, Paul Jenka, um, oh, my God. I mean, the names. I mean, like the big-time, you know, the big-time PUAs, they're all, they're all, Christian McQueen, those guys are like, hey, you know what? Step out in a suit. That's going to separate you from 95% of the guys out there. What are your thoughts on wearing a suit to to just just to just commingling other than professional functions or weddings or funerals now you mentioned i'm not a pua i mean i've my any experience i have has been lived experience okay good i wear a jacket but i wear let me show you something all right you see these jeans yeah these jeans aren't skinny jeans they're just slim fit they fit my body on a simple blazer and i'm wearing a t-shirt People say, I love that suit you're wearing. Right, right, right. Wow, okay, okay, there we go. And when, and when you wear, I can be standing in a, in, and the thing is, you command respect, because what do we associate suits with? Power, business, such and so forth. I, I will be standing in the middle of a food court or someplace with hundreds of people. People will come up to me and ask me a question. Do you know how to get to someplace? Do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do this? I could be standing in the local Dillard's or Neiman Marcus or Nordstrom's, people will be like, I, I thought you were the manager. We automatically assume you're in charge, you own mm -hmm. business, and so forth. So is it appropriate? For me, I say yes, but it has to be a suit that works at your style level. Like my style is more European. Let's say you have a much more all American style, or let's say you have a preppy kind of style. Mm -hmm. I just want to wear some like uh, some chinos with a seersucker blazer or a, a a window pane sports coat with just a polo shirt under it. It all there's all these different versions of it, but you do stand out because here's the hardcore reality of it. Every one of you guys, I want you, we're coming up on the weekend. Go to your local mall and just look and you see the guys who are 50 and, and 10 year old boys are all still wearing, you know, baggy distressed kind of jeans, a graphic tee with like their team logo on it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Guilty as charged, man. You're calling but, me out. But 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 here's but here's but there's a way to do that. Sure. And then like and then like uh the, the dad hat and then like some runner shoes. You can do that same thing and wear jeans, just have them be like dark denim or denim or just make sure they fit. Okay. The, the t shirt. Don't have mo the biggest error guys make is their stuff doesn't fit. If you think you're an extra large, size down to large. Go down one size. You can still wear the t-shirt. And then if you have the hat, I, I did a video about hats the other day where I took off my OU hat and I just put these on. This right. is one of the easiest ways a guy can change his look. Wow, you look like a completely different person. That's it. And these are sunglasses that I actually just put a prescription lens in so they change. Um, that's, there's a science behind all this. 
You don't have to know the science. You just have to know what works for you. You can go out and do the same thing I said. You can wear the the uh, sneakers, but there are different versions. Wear some Stan Smiths. Mm -hmm. Stan Smiths, some dark denim, and that graphic tee, and with a great simple watch, that could be a Timex Weekender. That's cool. Well, spray some fragrance on, and then just make sure your hat looks cool. You look completely different. Have a nice throwaway blazer in there, or a, a jean jacket, or a, a down kind of cool, a down little jacket, that, or a bomber jacket, even better, a bomber jacket. Right. You look a million, like a million bucks with the same stuff. <laughs> this, this is great information. Gentlemen, you are listening to TSR Live with one of the most sought-after men's wardrobe consultants, Kevin Samuels. Be sure to visit his website, buykevinsamuels.com. That is B-Y-K-E-V-I-N-S-A-M-U-E-L-S. -E you can find him on Twitter, at Kevin R. Samuels in the number one. He can also be found on Facebook by doing a search for Buy Kevin Samuels. He is also on Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat. Snapchat. I'm, I'm, I'm also sure he's on social media sites that haven't been invented yet he offers, <laughs> he offers a variety of services from just a, a simple image consultation to a full makeover and he can do this in person or via skype or by phone go to his website by and click on mail makeovers for your free 30-minute phone consultation and kevin one question i want to ask you um is is about some of the fashion do's and, and, and um, most importantly, don'ts. What do you feel is the biggest mistake that men make when dressing themselves? Well, the biggest mistake the men, there are two. One, well, there's one major mistake men make. It's, it's all about the fit. Okay. Fit, 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 fit. I always say fit over fashion. The average guy is wearing his shirt one to two sizes too big. Is that the average jacket is one size too big? The average weight, the average pants are below your stomach. Let's say you're a bigger guy. You need to wear your your pants at your natural waist, not below your belly. But it's all about the fit. You can wear a five thousand dollar outfit and look horrible. You can wear a thirty dollar outfit uh, minus the shoes and look incredible. I did this. I walked around wearing some nice shoes. I wore a $20 pair of Levi jeans, a Fruit of the Loom t-shirt, and I got more compliments on that outfit Wow! because it fit than I did when I wore this uh, $1,200 suit pants combo that didn't fit. It is all about the fit. Once you nail the fit, then, it, then you start getting into quality and that kind of stuff. And quality and price are two different things. Guys, we look at price and I look at value, but that's another conversation. Got a question here uh, from Antigravity74. He asks, should a chubbier guy wear fitted clothing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I direct your attention to uh, President uh, William H. Taft. Ah, yes. The heaviest. Uh, I think the, the, uh, one of the mm -hmm. most famous stories is they got stuck in a bathtub. Yep, but think about what do you think about when you when you visualize what he what he looked like? What do you remember? I just remember that he was fat. He's fat and he got that mustache. Right. Well, yeah. But if you if you look at him, he wore three piece suits, um, and he and from the three piece suit was one seamless piece of material from his shoes all the way up to his face. Henry the Eighth, the big the notorious picture of Henry yep. the Eighth. Yep. That dude is g'd up because everything fit on him. Chris Christie, governor of New York, whether you like him or not, he actually dresses as a heavier man really, really well. Now, where we think about it should be fitted, it's not skinny. Skinny has been, with this skateboard culture is kind of through stuff. <laughs> skateboard culture, I love yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just get rid of all the boot cut pants in your wardrobe and just make sure that they're tapered down at the ankle a little bit. Um, but everybody has a body type. The beautiful thing with the internet today, guys, is you can actually get custom clothing made for your body in the comfort of your own home quicker. I mean, you can get better quality stuff made cheaper if you're just willing to relearn some stuff. Uh, and you're going to have to learn it anyway because the retail malls and crap are closing left and right. <laughs> yeah, you got. Hey, you know what? You're absolutely right, man. I mean, listen, Amazon is putting everybody out of business. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, big guys, you know, I work with big guys uh, and, you know, non-traditional size guys. Honestly, unless you're 5'10 and 165 pounds, everything in the mall really doesn't fit you. Huh, I never thought of it. Why is that? Is I mean, is that the standard size? I mean, why yeah. is that? 
That's the, 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 the go to market strategy. The standard man is five foot ten, one hundred sixty five pounds. So they make a a block pattern to fit that. If you're taller, they just add more length on the um, bottom of the shirt. If you're shorter, they just move. But they don't really change the dimension. Most guys' arm holes are down here. There's so yes. many little things that you just have on it. Then then guys really understand. If you go custom. You'll see. I'm doing a video. I'm dropping a video this week talking about a custom shirt that I got. It was twenty four dollars. It looks better than a three hundred dollar shirt I own. How in the hell? How in the hell are you able to get custom clothes for that inexpensive? Like, where do you find this stuff? Um, in my business, there are companies like there are companies called Hockerty M. There are hundreds of companies. Okay. So these companies will come to my channel and say, "Hey, can you review our product?" And then if you like it. Uh, can you recommend it to your your guys? This watch, a company contacted me and they said their entire watch line. I reviewed it because I liked it, uh, and then I recommended it to my guys. Uh, you think about clothing. Just think about the business of it. That shirt that goes to to Macy's, they got to pay the employee at Macy's to say to sell it. They got to pay the rent. They got to pay customer service. The CEO, all that stuff is baked into the price. So even when wow. they had these eighty percent sales, they they got that thing for pennies on a dollar. And they're right, they're still making they're still making yeah. big money. So a, a company can take all that out, say go directly to the maker. Here's the material. Take a picture with your hands up like this, or get your measurements made done. Go to uh, Joseph A. Banks or Men's Warehouse, get measured for a tuxedo. Send us your measurements in. And we'll send you a shirt in two weeks. Okay, how did it fit? You like it? Didn't like it? Okay, send it back. We'll remake it. But once you dial your measurements in, every shirt, every shirt fits like a dream, and you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> it's been the best hack I've gotten last year outside of learning how to wear right hats for my head. This is, I'm telling you, man, this is, um, when I invited you on, man, I and I'm, and I'm, I'm being, I'm keeping it 100 here. I didn't expect this level of and i always learn from my guests but like this kind of stuff i had no like i'm 40 years old i had no idea about any of this stuff wooden hangers mm -hmm. custom fit clothes i mean i had i mean i honestly had no i mean i i mean this is <laughs> this is great information man what kind of bikes are those back there um they're actually a couple of schwins man um i used to ride a um i rode a uh, a schwinn uh 700c uh dsb oxblood i wrote two of those because one of them got stolen mm -hmm. uh last october so then i bought another one that was a little cheaper model but then i decided that after the winter time it was time to get back on that and my girl um bought me um i think it's called the osb something it's another 700 c 28 millimeter bike mm -hmm. um and uh yeah and she rides a schwinn she rides a schwinn as well i heard you say that you're uh, quite the cyclist uh, as well man so so, so we definitely like, have something in common there so just like cycling um I have a Cervelo R3, which one? Oh, the wow. Ones. Oh, wow. Because um, I, I do five uh, 100K, 100 mile races a year. No shit. Oh, wow. You are a hardcore, man. I, when I, I actually, I, I don't, I used to fight full contact martial arts. I used to fight Sin Shao, but at 40, I stopped doing that and I started riding more. Uh, that's how I stay. Yeah, that's how you so stay fit. You sure. But think about it. When you're riding the bike, you know there's a difference between riding and, you're riding 100 miles. You see the guys in the entire bike outfit. Yes, because it's not—it's not to look cool. It's because it's compression. It's this you're right. doing it for function. Right. Um, but if you're just out riding around the lake with your friends and such and so forth, you can throw on your your tennis shoes and shorts, such and so forth. Clothing is the same way. The beautiful thing is you get more out of you get more return out of spending a little bit more. But there is a point for everybody to where you can start spending a tremendous amount more, but you're not getting any more return. Okay. That's, that's a good that's analogy. Sweet that's that sweet spot that guys get to. Most guys are way over here. So if you just start actually learning a little bit more about this, and here's, I'm going to just say this. Honestly, it's cheaper to hire me to consult with you, to point you in the right direction, to tell you what you need to do for your body, for your outcome, the stores you need to shop at, the, your style, personality, and give you a complete roadmap, and then say, go forward. That'll, that'll save you thousands and thousands of dollars over your life, and you don't have to keep going back and forth. With you. Right, right. Because listen, man, fashion consultants, especially the high dollar ones. I don't know if you've ever been out to L.A., man. They, I oh, mean, yeah. they charge it to do. They're charging five figures, sometimes even six figures. I mean, yeah. just for a consultation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's and it's funny. 
BGS has mentioned that when I did this video. Um, I purposely, I left New York City and Dallas to come to Oklahoma to do this business. Okay. Because no one serves the Midwest and, and middle class guys. Um, I've, I've had some NBA clients, some NFL clients. Oh, wow. I've had people actually want me to do their stuff uh, primarily, but then that kind of made me feel too much like an employee. I can help more guys change their lives and outcomes at this level. I have to work harder. I have to do sure. more education, but that's really what I like. I speak at the local universities uh, in the spring and summer to the business school and to uh, the legal school, to the law school uh, about this. There's something that's being called soft skills. You're going to see more and more people going back to learn this stuff. Companies are actually starting to send their employees back to school to learn sure. A, B, C, D. And who's teaching those classes? It's not the fashion professors. It's not the legal professors. It's not the business professors. They're contracting with people. It's guys like you, yeah. The curriculum that they teach at the University of Oklahoma is my curriculum when I do my keynote speech every year. They build yeah, so take note, guys. What he's basically saying there is that, that that's code for I know my shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what that is. I think there's a, on YouTube, we get a sense of familiarity and we don't really realize because not a lot of a lot of people on YouTube are just talking about, hey, I, I'm good in style and I like what I do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sure. But somebody who's actually behind the scenes, who knows all this stuff, like you said, you weren't expecting this level of information. And we no. just surface. And here's the beautiful thing about it, guys. You don't have to know. It's like to, to say, how deep is your doctor's knowledge? Can he help you when you have a headache or when you hurt your toe? That's all you need to know. Sure. Go to that guy. He can help you and you'll be done. Good stuff, man. This is great information. Um, okay. So I've got a, I was telling you about a couple of uh, unique accessories that I have. If you guys are looking at the screen, oh, you can yeah. see my, yeah, my handcuff necklace. Um, mm -hmm. And then also my watch. Um, it's it. got a, it's got a nice leather cuff. I actually customized, I actually completely customized this watch myself. I bought, I bought the actual watch and I like good thick watches. I yeah. bought it and yeah, I bought, I bought this watch at Beverly Hills a few years back. And then I got the custom watch band from a small company in Florida uh, called OldSchoolLeather.com, the um, uh, uh, Ken and Jamie Cordell you out there. Uh, 25, 20, I think it was either 20 or 25 bucks, and I put the buttons on myself. So, and I listen, I get a lot of compliments on my handcuff necklace. Guys and girls, hey, I like your necklace. Hey, I like your watch. I know girls like it. Yeah, the ladies. Uh, listen, the ladies absolutely love mm -hmm. it. Um, and they're, listen, girls are always looking for an excuse to talk to you. And so, if you have that one accessory that sets you up, I don't listen. I don't know anybody else who has the handcuff necklace. I don't know anybody else who has a watch that look like that looks like this. And if they do, they don't have that combination. So, right. what in your estimation, Kevin? What is the single most important accessory a man should own? A watch. Okay. A watch, okay. A watch the no no a watch communicates so many things and it and I am I used to be a huge I, I've owned them all the Rolexes and all that other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. No. Get a get a nice metal day band watch or and then get some signature watches. Um, okay. With the, <laughs> it is the one accessory I put on every guy. Again, t-shirt, jeans, uh Stan Smith. Put on a watch, you instantly jump your style up. Wow. Two levels, a watch and then a fragrance that gives you two or three nuance points because it just shows attention to detail. It's a conversation piece. Fellow watch lovers were looking. Yes. At the, I'm looking at the watch and I'm like, OK, I see that your necklace. That necklace says bad boy player. <laughs> That's what that says. And women right. who want women who like an alpha male who's a bad boy player see those handcuffs and they're like, ooh, I like when if you use those on me. That happens inside of seven seconds. Sure. And that and that's that's who Donovan is internally, but he just said that across the way without having to say a word. That's what your image does. It speaks without you having to talk. This bracelet right here, mm -hmm. these these uh wings. That's more my rocker kind of. I like tool and all this other kind of stuff. Okay, okay. All these different and all these things say something different. This watch says something different. A guy, the most important accessory is a watch, and you can actually get watches today because all these companies are making uh, uh, private label watches for under 150 bucks, and you can change your watches out. And the beautiful thing, guys, if you watch my channel, I give these things away. I'm always doing giveaways from companies because when I review these kind of things, I always end up giving them away. 
or at least a discount code or something. So, you know, it, it's interesting um, what you say um, about a bunch of watch companies. Uh, Chrono, I'm a big, big fan of Chrono uh, of Chrono Fighter style watches, mm -hmm. and that's that's what this watch is sort of in the image of. It doesn't have the accessory on the side, but I've really, right. I've always, I've always really liked Chrono Fighter. Uh, style mm -hmm. watches and listen those watches go for seven eight nine thousand dollars you can get yep. you can get a clean replica for seventy five dollars a hundred dollars um easily easily it's very now this is sort of an off this is sort of an off question i'm a i'm left-handed and i so wear my watch oh okay but i do you wear your watch on your right hand or your left hand i switch and there's no protocol oh, oh there's no, okay there's, okay there's, you know you typically you wear it on your off hand um so I will have people say, well, why are you wearing your, and actually I, I haven't, the only reason I have these over here is because I hurt my finger. Okay. I typically wear my watch on my right hand because I'm left-handed and it automatically grabs somebody's attention because yes. it stands out from the norm. Right. Because so, everybody wears their watches on their left hand because most people are right-handed. So with the way you look, you have the lines, you got the beard. So that automatically says manly. You have the I can see your cheekbones. I see that necklace. It says "Bad Boy Player." You got a big, manly watch on your right on your right hand with the tattoos right there. Women who like "Bad Boy Player" kind of stuff are going to be drawn to you. They're going to automatically think you say one thing, and when you go speak to them, they're going to be like, "Wow, yeah." Half your work is done by your image. Yes, yes, I would, I would, I would totally. And listen, I've never been a fashion consultant, but you know, guys that like guys who come to me for advice. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, I don't have your level of knowledge, but I tell them, look, man, like, you know, what you wear says a lot about you. I can't give you the, I can't give you the deep scientific knowledge like Kevin Samuels does, but I can tell you that what you wear is very important because it conveys, it conveys a lot about you in a very short period of time. And that's all. And that's a beautiful thing. That's all you wanted to do. You wanted to nail that first seven seconds to where you can actually get in and get a chance. Nail that opening and then let it let your behavior, communication, game, style, whatever it is, get you through the next point. Are you going to win everything? No, but you'll always be in it. And and the beautiful thing is it's authentic to you. Even if you're not around anybody, you like that fucking watch. Right. That's you what I'm like, saying. You like that necklace. You like what you do. You like you like when you see it, like, yeah, I like that. Because you recognize your outside on the, you recognize your uh, your inside being shown on the outside and it makes sense. It's all about the authentic you. Good, good, very good, very good information. Yeah, I like. Listen, I like. I like anybody who tells me that. Um, every, anybody who tells me that my style, um, you know, whatever you want to call my style, uh, you're you're definitely going to get high marks for me. You addressed this a little bit earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it again for those of you uh, who are joining us a little bit late. What would you say to men out there who say, "Well, I don't need to look flashy. I don't need to pay attention to my clothes. My game and my personality will win girls over." What do you say to guys like that? I'd say that, you know, you're fighting with half of your arsenal. It's not an either or thing. It's an and thing. It's you. you I, and here's the thing. A lot of guys have been brainwashed to being less than we have such a war on manhood right now. Oh, of course. Especially of course. You're an alpha male and such and so forth. They're tamping you down, trying to tell you, oh, you just need to be. It's your character. It's your your ethic. Good if attraction happens. Look. Anita Hill, Clarence Thomas. Would it have been sexual harassment if Clarence Thomas looked like Denzel Washington? Hell no. That's of course not. That, and, and guys, we intend to, and the guys who, and the beautiful thing is, guys, we're logical. When we finally accept it, these are the rules to the game. We play the game by the rules. That's right. And, and, and then you can win. It's like, even you say you don't care about your, your, you're not into fashion, but you care about your appearance and what you, I see you and everything is always consistent. When I see you on tape or on, on YouTube, I'm like, he's consistent with who he is or who I think he is to be. You couldn't come on here with pastel colors and uh, and, a, and a bow tie. And a, that wouldn't make any sense <laughs> to me. I'd be like, right. wait a minute, these two things don't match. But if you came on with some John, uh, John Barbados black leather jacket and, you know, you know, uh, 
I like, oh yeah, that that makes sense. That's okay. who he is. What should um should a man ever take fashion advice from a woman? Because listen, obviously this is a very male centric show. Mm -hmm. it, actually, no, it is a male centric show. I don't, <laughs> okay. and I don't. The, I mean, I don't take advice. The only kind of advice I take from women or a woman is my girl, who's she's an internet marketing expert. Other than that, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of yeah, she's she's definitely she's an exception to the rule in a lot of different ways. Ways. um that doesn't make her a snowflake or a unicorn but 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 right. be, be that as it may she's very good at what she does so when right. it comes to internet marketing i defer to her expertise what about because because we're all we're all raised to believe that women have a they have a much keener sense of fashion sense right like men we don't know anything about fashion so we defer to women so that's the kryptonite Okay. All right. So your answer is, I guess it's no, or no, it's no for this reason. Okay. Female nature, we're all red pill. Women think about themselves more than anything else. When women dress their men or their boys or their husbands or their family, they're dressing you like they'd like to see you, but they also want to keep you not looking as good as you can. Right. Right. Oh, that's exactly and at right. At the end of the day, they're really dressing you to fit with what they have because it's about them. <laughs> so I, I love going to a store and see a husband, a, a, a husband, and maybe a son, and then the mother leaves. I'm she's picking see. everything out. Yeah, she's picking everything out, and the husband and the sons are just walking behind like drones. I'm like, how do y'all feel? Oh, this sucks. I'm like, what are you trying to? And then I will step into the situation and help the boy. I filmed this kind of stuff. Wow. The only time you accept a woman's advice is if she's an actual professional in fashion, or, or she. No, I would I'd say that she has to be an actual professional in fashion or she has to have a track record of being able to dress men that don't or that aren't attached to her uh, because your girl can dress you, but she's you're still going to like it. Now, how do you how do you navigate that in the context of a relationship? You tell them some things you like, uh, but you make the major things yourself. The shoes, the okay. shoes got to be you, the cologne has to be you there are more guys sitting on fragrance that their girlfriend bought them that the girlfriend wanted to have them wear and they hate it and they only wear it when it sits around her you wear the <laughs> shit she likes when it sits around her but you got to wear like you i'll throw you in some john barbados dark rebel and you would love it that stuff's 30 bucks because it just works with yours with your style right. it's leather it's this it communicates all the things you want to it's not overbearing it's kick ass um and overall, it's about being your best level. Look, guys, understand something. The world is a better place when a man is the best version of himself. When you're on your game, doing your thing, in your zone, do, living your truth, women will follow you. They may tell you what they want, but they really want to follow. If she wants to give you advice, you know, you can say, thanks, honey. But if you can actually show her that you got a consultation, you learn how to do it on herself, she's going to get moist. She'll be like, ooh, he wouldn't, because she's going to think you did it for her. You went and got a style right. consult? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to look good for you. You're doing it for you. <laughs> that's good. I, I wanted to look. Now, see, now that's not something I would say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, listen, if my girl were to say, hey, and, and that that's the thing. My girl doesn't try to dress me. She does buy me stuff every once in a while. But, right. you know, if, if you guys are in relationships, dude, grab your balls. Hey, look, you know, uh, can I buy you X, Y, Z? No, 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 no. I got it. Listen, I got I'm I got a consultant with Kevin Samuels and, and he's going to dress me. Well, what if I don't like it? Well, tough. <laughs> that's she, that's she, just how it is. I have more wives that will actually I've had more wives and girlfriends who book consults. With their no men. shit. Are you serious? Well, come on, dude. One of the easiest ways to inject in some romance into a relationship, a woman that's with you, she wants you to look good. And if you're because it represents her. Exactly. Yes. And yes. a lot of guys don't know how to do it. And and here's the thing: most guys are like, oh, that's gay. I'm not gonna go have a guy tell me what, what to put on. Women will buy a, a buy it and tell their husbands they want it or whatever. I am responsible for more children being born in Oklahoma. Ah, you <laughs> I got all these little suburban it. wives coming up and saying, I booked my husband a console. And I'll be sitting with the guy and he'll look at me like big black dude. Then I'll and I'll show him something like I like this dude. I'm like, yeah. And then you see the wives milk and the guys always call me and be like, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> look, 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 let me, let me tell you about what happened last night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a win-win fucking situation. Sure. You can't beat it. So everybody's, everybody's a winner in that one. <laughs>
I got two more questions for you. The, the first question is, how many pairs of pants? How many dress shirts? Um, we already said five pairs of shoes. How mm -hmm. many pants? How many dress shirts? How many T-shirts? What is the number of your, your foundation, right? You don't want to go out and buy you know something you can only wear with one outfit. So right. how many pairs of pants? What color? How many dress shirts? What color should a man have if he's looking to build a solid wardrobe? Okay, let's start with... I'm going to answer this two ways. The okay. best thing to do is nail the dress shirts. You need lots of crisp white cotton dress shirts. So like three white cotton dress shirts. Okay. With varying colors. One with the widespread, one with the point. Uh, you need one blue, which is like baby bluish. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're a guy who's anti-pink, you can get a purple, a lighter purple. If you're not, if you're not a, have a problem with pink, you can get pink. So that's five shirts. Okay. Jeans. All guys need one pair of dark, denim jeans dark blue almost black they need to be you know slim cut not skinny slim and then tapered at the ankle then after that you can go in to get a black pair or a gray pair then get a distressed pair but you only really need one pair of jeans max or, or two but that dark denim looks like a some suit pants when you're with that white shirt sure right 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 that's when people are telling you hey you have a nice suit on when you're wearing a denim pair of pants a blazer and a t-shirt that's it. So the majority of stuff a guy's going to wear is going to be T-shirts. Uh, V-necks were in really heavily last couple of years, but yep. crew-necks will always be in. Just make sure you get nice Pima cotton shirts that you can't see through. Okay. Uh, and I, I always like to stick to the monochrome. I'm white and black. And okay. then if I put any color in, it'll maybe a gray or navy blue. But really, it's a varying mix. But the, the basis is the dress shirt and the T-shirt. Then you can throw in a polo shirt, mm -hmm. the polo shirt. And then uh, you want a one blazer. The difference between a blazer and a sports coat is the buttons. I like to get a sports coat because it doesn't have the metal buttons. Then that dark cuts, that dark suit, and you're really good. But here's the simpler equation. Guys, you can get 21 plus days of clothing outfits out of nine pieces. Wow. I have a video on my channel where I show, and I stopped at 21. Okay. It was it was a pair of jeans, a pair of a slacks. It was three shirts. It was a tie. It was a sweater. It was a jacket. It's a pair of shoes. Uh, it came up to be nine items, and you get so many different outfits, and they look different because you think about it. That white shirt. Put that white shirt on with some slacks and a pair of shoes. That's one outfit. Change the shoe, change the uh, pants to jeans. It's another outfit. Throw Jesus. a sweater on top of that on either one of those. That's two more outfits. Throw a jacket on top of either one of those. That's you see how the progression goes. So you can actually invest in higher quality garments that look great. My wardrobe is not extensive. It's just well designed because it's a plan. Very good, man. That is great information. I got a, I got another question here from a viewer. He says, can you recommend a good brand of jeans to buy? Joe. Joe, J-O-E. Joe okay. is a good brand of jeans, and you can get them at NordstromRack.com. Joe and the Brixton. The Brixton is a, a kind of cut that works with any guy. And the price is about retail at Nordstrom Rack is about $79.97. Okay. Re, uh, re, uh, original cost is like 200 bucks you can get them for as little as 20 dollars when they're on sale though so when you say nordstrom rack my get what's the difference between nordstrom and nordstrom rack like is there are they two different every, stores or yeah they're two different stores every major department store has a version of their outlet mall the, the ah outlet mall. so this so, is where you can get stuff on discount yeah like Saks fifth avenue high-end yeah. store they have Saks off fifth so you know this bracelet came from Saks off fifth at Sacks, this thing was 700 bucks. I got it at Sacks off wow. fifth and I got for $60. Jesus Christ, man. So you just have to know where to find this stuff. Yeah. And for me, I live this stuff. So I get the, I have special access, but you can all go to these websites, NordstromRack.com, SacksOffFifth.com. And then you all know Neiman Marcus. Neiman Marcus has yeah. a website called Last Call. Go look for Magnani Shoes. And just show yourself. You'll go see a pair of McNani shoes in Nordstrom. It'll be five hundred dollars, and you'll go see the same shoes on Nordstrom rack for one hundred and fifty. God damn, man, that well, is unbelievable. That that right there, guys, pay me 
$60 to ask questions to get that little bit of knowledge. Let me give you two more. Let me give you two more. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Do not buy cologne or fragrance in a mall or a store ever again. I'm going to say <laughs> this for 100%. You can go to two websites, Notino, N-O-T-I-N-O dot com, and huh? get the very same fragrance. I don't care if it's high-end Creed fragrance that's $500 a bottle, or you can go get Aqua Di Gio Profumo, which is, you know, it's going to be sick. It's going to be 40 to 70% off. Stuff that you can walk into the mall and have to drive and park and everything else, you can have it delivered in two days, or FragranceNet.com. Now subscribe to my channel for that information. Cause Absolutely. I'm, 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 listen, guys, I've spammed Kevin's, uh, I've spammed Kevin's channel here. Uh, guys, uh, listen, man, obviously Kevin knows his shit. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to his channel. Go to his website, buykevinsamuels.com. Free 30-minute consultation. Um, you seem to be big on fragrances. Yes. Um, what, yes. what is the, talk, talk about the importance of, of – because I'll, I'll give you my – because I – because me, I don't, I, don't, I don't own cologne. I use, mm -hmm. I use Old Spice Body Spray, the Fiji kind. I've been wearing that for a year and a half. So I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's good, bad, or whatever. Give but, me your address, and I'm going to send you something. You'll see. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, that, that's what we like to hear here, uh, here at TSR Towers. We'll, we'll make sure we get that. Um, what, what's the importance of, of, of fragrance and smelling good? The importance, of, okay. Fragrance is the uh, exclamation point on your personal brand. Why is okay. it important? Let's be, fragrance is the first sense that a human being develops. It's the most important scent. Think about childhood memories. Do you remember what your mama's cookies smelled like or grandma's house or that, that one girl that you used to like? It is the sense that's tied closest to memory. As far as red pill, red pill knowledge, it is one of the easiest ways to hook a woman before. Roses, right. ambers, and vanillas hit a woman's subconscious in a, in a way that guys, I, I could spend hours telling you. That's why... Guys have always given women roses. It hits their subconscious. But as far as and as far as guys, things like leathers and woods and vetivers make you feel more masculine and manly. Are you into aromatherapy? No. Have you ever been into aromatherapy? I've, I've never tried it before. But you know, you, we all understand what it is. Certain sure. smells can make you feel certain ways. Uh, same thing. The importance of wearing a fragrance is 95% of people don't wear something. It just separates you. It, it's uniquely you. Just like your, your watch and your uh, necklace, wearing a scent, a fragrance every day, people will start to associate that with you, and plus it elevates your mood. It's, sure. There's so many different It smells things. good. It smells good, and, and it's not complicated. And it doesn't have to be overly powerful. Uh, every, guy, there's one, every guy can get away with having one signature scent and then maybe having maximum six different fragrances really i think they're about three or four that you could okay. use for a lifetime how about that <laughs> and that was just a question i was interested in myself my last question uh for you kevin and listen man this is this has been this has been awesome man like i've learned that like we've been on for a little hell man we've been on for now for over almost what an hour and a half hour and 45 yeah. minutes no an hour hour and 15 minutes mm -hmm. um and i've i've learned more about fashion and fragrances than i've learned my entire life um right. so i definitely appreciate you having uh, i definitely appreciate having you on i will definitely have you on again in the near future Ooh. being in shape what is how important is being in shape to looking good or is it, it because you mentioned governor chris christie uh out there in the state of new jersey he's a big guy he dresses well former president william h taft obviously looked like a million bucks he was a big guy so mm -hmm. is be, does being in shape help or hurt you more than being a bigger guy hurts you honestly if you if you nail your image you have most of the game won. Okay. The average woman really doesn't like a guy who's big, swole up, muscle bound. They like a guy who's must, who's solid, mm -hmm. leaning more towards like a dad bod. But it's easier to dress in proportion when you uh, your silhouette looks different, your shape looks different. Sure. But overall, here's the thing: I will tell you this: any guy. I don't care what you look like, what your body style is, how tall, how short you are. If you just have a simple outfit that fits, wear a fragrance, put on a watch, make sure your shoes are clean and they're nice. Two to three points a, 
easily. It's documented, it's scientific, you can't beat it. And then it's like, if you are in shape, have a great body, broad shoulders, you just keep winning, you just keep gaining. It's not like, uh, it's not either or, it's an and thing. Right, okay. Every guy can look good. Every guy can look good. Kevin, my friend, it has been, it's been a pleasure, man. Um, like I said, this has been, <laughs> this has been one of my best, uh, this has been a, one of my best interviews to date. I, I don't think I have, I, I don't think I've ever learned as much about one topic as I have here tonight. Uh, so my, my thanks to you, I've sent you, I've sent you my address so that you can get me, so that you can get me out of this, uh, out of this fragrance purgatory uh, that I, uh, that I seem to be in. Um, guys, Follow this guy on Twitter at Kevin uh, at Kevin R Samuels and the number one. You can dude go to his website, check out check out his services, buy Kevinsamuels.com. You can also find him on Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat. Um, what else am I uh, what else am I missing? Listen, go to his website, buy Kevinsamuels.com, hover your mouse over mail makeovers. And you can click on either live or or virtual or in person or virtual. And you can get a free thirty minute phone consultation, um, guys. This guy is the real deal. I absolutely will will have him on. Jeopardy Clark says, "Damn, I hate that I missed this." Don't worry, Jeopardy. This is going to be on replay. Uh, Kevin, any parting words uh, before we cut this thing off? No, guys. Look, understand something that it's all about being the best version of yourself. It's not about wearing a costume or an outfit. It's not about trying to look too try hard, trying to impress anybody. It's about liking the man in the mirror and, 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 and enjoying the life you have. You can do it. You can do it with the money you have. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have model good looks. Every guy can pull this off. You just have to make the decision to actually want to learn something new and be open to a little bit of information and you'd be amazed at what life can offer you. So that's it. Thanks for having me on Donovan. Hey, Kevin, great, listen, man. we, listen, we got to do this again sometime soon. And I think, listen, whenever my next interview with you, I just wore, I just wore a basic, uh, you know, little short sleeved, uh, hoodie here that I got off of Amazon for six bucks. I'm going to have to step up my vestment game the next time I come on with you, man. You make me look bad over here. <laughs> Kevin, it has been a pleasure. We will do this again soon. Thank you very much. Bye, guys.